Hello everybody and welcome to a new video series all about mastery. I'm calling it Mastering Mastery and I'm going to end up doing I think three videos for this uh, looking at each role, maybe four if I decide to put healers in their own category. Um, but mastery is a complicated stat and I know it's not intuitive because it goes through a lot of different things or a lot of different steps which aren't right there for you. The calculation isn't apparent. Um, and when you gain mastery in battle, you don't know how much you have already. If you lose, you don't know how much you've lost. Uh, so if you're like a stats buff, you probably don't need to go any further than this table. So this table shows what stat you gain or lose based on each point of mastery. So if you look at a character, they have a point number for mastery assigned to them, and it's not very high. It's like 15 for Relic 3. Uh, like 70 or something for relic seven and it just it also depends on the role what how much mastery you get per relic level um but so say you had just for simplicity's sake you had 100 mastery points and then if you gained that would be like 30 percent accuracy so if you gained 100 percent mastery you'd be getting 100 percent accuracy uh similarly you'd have 2600 damage from getting 100% mastery and then any, any proportion you want to change from that if you get a 50% mastery gain you better be getting 1300 damage for that uh dp that's defense penetration and that number is also confusing because it's not defense is just confusing in general but you'd get 200 defense penetration for 100% mastery gain if you had a 100 mastery stat now if you had a lower mastery stat like 10 uh, then 100% mastery gain would only mean 3% accuracy. Uh, so master really affects the higher relics way more, including losing it from stuff like Siphon. And in the rest of the video, I'm going to look at which characters, the entirety of all characters to fit within each role for the attackers, whether strength attacker, agility attacker, or a tactics attacker. And I'm also going to go in game to talk about some of the more complicated mechanics that affect mastery. Um, which is mainly Galactic Legends because they interact with Mastery the most. It was actually invented for them. Okay, so first we're looking at Strength Attackers, and this is the second most populous uh, attacker class. As you can see, one, two, three. There's 36 Strength Attackers in the game, as of now, as of the, the date of this video. And they're gaining damage, defense penetration, and accuracy. Uh, so the stats you see up here, these are examples of what the stats look like per relic level at 3, 5, and 7, just for examples, very common stopping points. Um, things like armor penetration and accuracy aren't affected by relic increases in general. So the amounts you see for armor penetration and accuracy are only due to mastery. However, with damage and <clears throat> sometimes crit chance later, Increasing a relic level just naturally gives damage, even if it's not part of the mastery class. So this is an intermingled number, the 1020, 1732, and 2704 damage figures. Uh, that is not just mastery. And the way they used to display it on a character's relic sheet, it had it split up, uh, but they ultimately combined it all together. I think as people preferred more to see overall how much damage they were getting extra per relic level as opposed to splitting up mastery. Uh, so I didn't have an easy way to display that. However, when you're looking at mastery gains, you're going to use that multiplication table that I showed earlier with the number they have here. So they only have 15 mastery at Relic 3, 25 at 5, and 45 at Relic 7. Uh, so just by doing some math, you're getting plus 5 mastery each Relic level before five or one, until you reach 5, and then 6 and 7, you're getting an extra 10. Um, and for... Uh, eight to nine, it's it's. I think it's still ten. No, it's it might be fifteen. Um, but the higher relic you get, the more it impacts your mastery. Uh, some so some notable characters here is Lord Vader. You know Darth Vader. Uh, Darth Vader having accuracy actually did help me once when um, when set four was active because so much dodge, you got an extra like eighteen percent accuracy from being relic eight, and then whatever accuracy I had affected it. Uh, and Jedi Knight Luke is an interesting one, too. He loses mastery. He loses accuracy when he's going against Kylo Ren. So I'm going to talk about Kylo Ren's kit later. Uh, but he's one of the only non-GLs that can stand up to Kylo Ren and actually notice his uh, mastery being siphoned off enough to where he is missing every turn. Uh, but let me take a deeper look at Darth Vader because 
He's the only strength attacker, uh, Galactic Legend, so we're going to look at how the mastery affects him. So here I am looking at Lord Vader, and he increases his mastery in a couple ways. Uh, so first off, right now at Relic 8, he has 75 mastery for his accuracy, damage, and defense penetration. And remember, per point, that's 26 damage, 0.3% uh, accuracy, and 2 defense penetration. One way he's gaining mastery is with his AoE. He gets 1% mastery for each stack of underestimated, so that's max 60. So at the most... He's getting 60% mastery uh, for a decent chunk of damage, but it's not going to be super noticeable. Uh, the other way he's getting mastery is his ultimate. So when he pops his ultimate, if he's not at full charge, he gets 50% of other dark side users' current mastery stacking. Uh, and the current, I think, does play in because Kylo Ren's mastery description doesn't say current. So when he's siphoning, it's just off their base mastery. Um, so if they have like, if they have reduced mastery, he's not taking a reduced amount. He's not reducing theirs at a reduced rate, if that makes sense. If he's at 100% ultimate, he gets 75% mastery from each ally. Um, and that doesn't mean he's gonna take, so that's where it can be kind of confusing. And obviously when you're playing it out, you know your allies aren't losing 75% of their offense, um, but it's 75% of their offense that they have based on mastery. Uh, so if you had like 2000, damage from just mastery and not from other things like uh your just base damage or offense up or something then you'd be losing 1500 ma uh, damage and uh lord vader would gain that amount so he is actually more of a siphon um to his own team and yes it's it is confusing but I, i'm not i don't have perfect math for it but that's how it's working for him with his mastery gain and here I am looking at the Agility Attackers class, and I had to make myself really small in the corner because this is the most populous mastery class in the whole game. Um, first of all, Attacker is the most populous role in the game. There's over 100 Attackers, and there's 61 total Agility Attackers. Um, I do think this is the best mastery class for Attackers because you're getting damage, critical damage, and critical chance. So it's all about the damage. And that's why Supreme Leader Kylo is ramping up so much when he has his siphon stacks going in like the Sith raid or uh, challenge fit raid because he's getting both damage and crit damage. Uh, and the crit damage is a true amount. Um, you're not seeing that as mastery, or that's not part of a normal increase for a character with relics. So the amounts of crit damage at relic seven, 13.5%, uh, that's purely due to mastery. Um, same with special critical chance. So if you look at these figures, crit chance, uh, what says, says damage and critical damage, that's actually physical. Physical critical chance goes up normally for any relic character. So you get, you end up getting tons of critical chance, more than you need if you're a physical character, but then special damage characters, even if they're attackers or agility attackers, they're barely getting any extra crit chance. So it's not enough to make a character a crit more than not character if they're a special damage character and that's part of why you see special damage characters having such low critical chance like Fennec Shan, Cat, um, and uh, yeah so the mastery is the same for this class 15, 25, 45 at relic 3, 5, and 7. Um, a lot of these characters use their mastery well. There's some that don't. I mean like B1 isn't getting critical damage or critical chance out of it. Uh, some of these aren't big damage dealers. Um, <clears throat> but for the most part, everyone here is getting good use out of their mastery stat. And this is this has the most galactic legend. So we got Ray. This is an alphabet, alphabetical order, if if you were one, if you were wondering. Uh, it's not ranked or anything. Um, so we got Ray, Jedi Master Kenobi, and Supreme Leader Kylo. So that's three in one mastery class. And there's a reason for that. I think it's just the most powerful one. So when designing Galactic Legends, the first two were agility attackers, and that's because um, I think they probably looked at the mastery stats and were like, hmm, okay, this, this is the best. Because accuracy is, for the most part, it, it's kind of a throwaway. Um, I mean, when set four was active, it wasn't, but it's not having as big of an impact. It's just pure damage, crit damage, and critical chance. So here I am with Kylo Ren. He's Relic A, just like Lord Vader. Um, so he has the same mastery, 75. Uh, what I want to look at the most is Siphon, because that's how he is affecting mastery the most. There's a couple descriptions of it in his kit, and this one I think is a little bit confusing and misleading. 
It says this you from his basic it says this unit will gain one percent of a stat it doesn't say anything about mastery per stack and the target will lose the amount gained so the the more apt description which mm -hmm. is in his special is siphon's ma siphon mastery he gains a percentage of mastery equal to this unit's siphon until the end of the encounter and the target loses that much mastery so for simplicity's mm -hmm. sake oh, uh let's say Kaloren has 100 stacks of Siphon. Um, and, well, I guess the Siphon is describing the stat. Well, <laughs> it's still confusing because I think that description is misleading because it's talking about stats and not mastery. Uh, but when he ha when Kaloren has 100 stacks of Siphon, he's gaining, he's taking away 100% um, times whatever mastery his opponent has. So it's if it's Relic 3, he's only taking away 15 from them. He himself is gaining 75, like mine, if it was Relic 9, it'd be more. And it's not the same stat. That's important to note. So like when he's facing Jedi Knight Luke, Luke is losing accuracy constantly. And then if you're using Luke, you'll notice uh, at the end, you can't hit anymore. Basically, if, if you stay alive long enough, you're going to start whiffing. Um, that's because he's losing accuracy because his mastery is a strength attacker. But Kylo Ren is an agility attacker, so he's just gaining crit damage and damage crit chance but you know it doesn't even really matter that much to start because he has such high such a high amount um so to actually like start doubling his offense he'd have to have like 600 siphon or something um because if you take the base mastery 75 times that uh 26 number so let's do 75 times 26 which is the mastery point um, even if he got 100% mastery, or if, even if he had 100 sacks of siphon, he's getting 1950 damage. And his, yeah, I come back and gotta come back and scroll down a little bit. Um, damage. So right now mine has 12,962. So in order to get that am amount again, um, I'd have to have like almost 700 stacks of siphon to just double straight out now i mean in the raids like you go long enough he starts just getting crazy amounts of damage anyway um but i think it's all coming back to that base stat uh but his since his crit damage is increasing too it seems like it might be multiplicative uh but it's really just additive based on his original mastery stat because it doesn't say anything about current mastery for him Next, I'm going to talk about Rey because her mastery interaction is pretty simple. There's only one place in her kit that's talking about mastery. It's she gives out 40% mastery at the beginning, which isn't that big of an impact if you actually do the math there. Uh, but then all light side, inspired light side alleys, not even all light side alleys, are gaining 5% mastery when an enemy gains bonus turn meter. So I take that as every instance of an enemy getting turn meter. So if each out each enemy is getting 5% turn meter, then you're getting 25% mastery on your end. Um, if an enemy gains 100% turn meter once, that's still only one instance of getting turn meter. So you get 5% mastery. And she, you know, that's slow, but it can happen pretty often. And her mastery is, you know, as the same as Kylo Ren, crit chance, crit damage, and damage. She does eventually start hit, hitting pretty hard, but it is pretty slow, so it takes a long time. But if you, like, bring Jedi Master Luke in there, start spamming that special ability on, like, Hoda, per se. Hoda is giving turn meter to the whole team. <clears throat> Plus, he's getting turn meter from that ability. Um, so that's like 30% mastery each time. So that's when it really starts getting out of control. So you gotta be careful there against her. Here I am looking at Jedi Master Kenobi and he has kind of the most bloated kit with mastery. It's everywhere. Uh, first of all, in his ultimate, um, he's gaining, uh, all, or when he pops his ultimate, all other light side alleys gaining percentage of mastery equal to the amount of ultimate charge used and doubled at 100. So if you use 99% uh, charge and you pop it you're gonna gain 99 percent mastery at 100 you get 200 uh, so that's why it's usually more beneficial to wait for the full um all and there's other reasons i mean you get high ground for five turns it's uh you know you, you get a lot of extra stuff at 100 percent. so that's just multiplying that base number for each ally the higher the relic they have the more mastery they're getting from that although it is relatively minor it does stack um, but it's just relatively minor. It's a slow build. 
And then in his unique, he or his leadership, he gives a little bit mastery, 25% mastery um, at the beginning. So that's just a little bit of a boost. It doesn't really do that much, but it's in his unique where it's talking about mastery all the time. When another light side ally targets JMK, uh, you just spell buffs on him, but gain mastery equal to 10% of their current mastery. So um, I take that as if they have 75 mastery points, he's getting 7.5 7 mastery points himself. Um, but it does say current mastery. So if they have increased mastery, say they have about 75 mastery to begin with and then they gain 100 percent mastery and they have 150 mastery points uh, i look at it as and then whatever impact it has on your stats you're just doing that multiplication of the table um so the amount to figure what their mastery is you got to look at that specific number but that specific number itself doesn't have the direct impact it affects stats and that has the the impact um and then when he targets another Galactic Republic or Lesufu ally with an ability, uh, they gain mastery equal to 20% of his current mastery. Uh, so this is why in the heroic, heroic Sith Raid, if you use him with Commander Tano um, in like C-3PO, Hoda, you, you want to target him with everyone with all the attack, with all the abilities. Once you spread out master training and translation and all that. So he's ramping up his mastery and then he's targeting Kat and getting her to get a boost. So... Uh, I prioritize targeting Cat in that raid over like C-3PO for a cooldown reduction because I want her to get up as high as possible. Um, there's other mechanics in there that makes Cat do so much, but I'm not here to talk about that. Um, but yeah, and he is an agility attacker, so he's just gaining pure damage too. So sometimes it might seem like mastery is all just about damage because the characters that manipulate mastery the most are attackers and they are the ones getting most of the damage and characters like Jedi Master Luke which I'll talk about in a later video uh, they're not gaining damage from that next up we got the most exclusive club in the attackers class we got tactic attackers and there's only 12 here um, a lot of them are pretty good I think picking this mastery class is a deliberate decision because you can ramp up your damage a ton so if you look on the bottom uh, for the relic level three, five, and seven. By the time you get to seven, you're getting plus three thousand eight hundred damage, um, as opposed to you'd get twenty seven twenty five if you're a physical attacker. And you know the tactics attackers are also getting physical damage, but that's not the applicable number. Uh, so that's why Fennec Shand is such a heavy hitter. Darth Revan particularly benefits from this if you're using his lead, because even though he's a tactics attacker using special damage and has lower crit chance. His kit gives out a ton of crit chance, so he's critting plenty, and he's getting advantage, getting the advantage of all that extra special damage there. So I think he uses his particularly well. Uh, Revan is a decent user of it, but he's not a damage dealer anyway. Uh, Finn and Poe, you notice that they're not critting much if you use them a lot. Same with uh, uh, Ben here. He, he just doesn't crit as much, so you want to load them up on offense. So the Eternal Emperor... He, he also doesn't crit a ton uh, before he pops his ultimate. Like, it, a lot of times you're just seeing the blue number there. Um, but he's, I think he's the only one here that manipulates Master. So I'm going to look at his kit a little bit. So Tactic Attackers are just kind of a combo with their stat, their Master stats. A uh, combo of what Strength and Agility Attackers get. They get Accuracy like a Strength Attacker. And then they get uh, Crit Chance kind of like an Agility Attacker. They don't get crit damage, but for, for the most part, that's fine because they have lower crit chance to begin with. Um, but all attackers gain damage, so that's just the commonality among them. And I'm going to look at Sith Eternal because he is the one here that does effect mastery. All right, so Sith Eternal, his mastery manipulation isn't super complicated, although it is, you know, it, it is a little confusing um, to if you want to keep track of the actual numbers. Uh, so when he pops the ultimate, he gains mastery equal to his current mastery until the end of the battle. Um, and then if he's the leader, all other dark side allies gain mastery equal to their current mastery until the end of the battle. Um, so since his ultimate is only a pop at full charge, um, that's the only thing to worry about there. So that's to that go into that base stat of 75 for him and whatever they have. He doesn't siphon it away from them like Lord Vader does. Uh, he just... He, he supports his whole team. He's a supporter. Um, and then in his leadership, he gives a little bit of mastery. Uh, it's plus 25% mastery for Dark Side Alley's doubled for him. So it's 
50% to start. It's like okay again, but it takes a lot of the extra movements to get that to a point where it's really noticeable. Um, so the way he stacks is whenever a deceived or linked at enemy uses an ability, C gains 10% mastery until the end of the encounter, and other allies gain half. Uh, since C is kind of like a one-man show most of the time, you're not seeing that affect the allies. Uh, but with him, where I saw this come into play, this helped me the most by knowing this a long time ago in 3v3. I had studied the kit to look at this, and I faced the Bastila Jedi Master Luke Watt combo, where Jedi Master Luke usually has so much bonus protection that's recovering that you never get through him with the Eternal Emperor. So what I did, I deliberately uh, delayed popping into ultimate so that there would be more enemies to have deceived and linked to stack mastery. And I waited until his basic went from like a base of doing 15,000 damage to like 70,000 damage. And then I popped ultimate. Uh, so I was getting more mastery from that ultimate as well. And then I had enough damage to get through him. But if you just popped ultimate right away, uh, then you're not going to get through him ever. And that was a timeout team. It wasn't going to kill me. Um, but I wasn't going to kill uh, Jedi Master Luke either if he was recovering a couple hundred thousand uh, points of bonus protection every turn too. Uh, and I don't think I don't think his unique gives any mastery. Yeah, it doesn't affect mastery at all. Uh, but yeah, that's Sith Eternal, uh, the only tactics attacker Galactic Legend as of now. So that is it for attackers. Uh, I know it's uh, confusing to keep track of, but if you're really interested, you can just take a screenshot of this table if you want to figure out the mastery per stat in a granular form. I don't think it's worth it to do long form calculations uh, about what's going to happen later because it's just too unpredictable for it to be just manipulatable at that point. Uh, what's important is understanding what is happening when you're like siphoning or when you're gaining mastery because mastery is not always synonymous with just extra damage. Uh, it is for these classes, the attackers, um, but that's why they're attackers. Anyway, let me know what you think. What, what would you like to see different in a tank video or support and healer video? It's take a long time to make, so it might be a while before the next one. Uh, so I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you for the next one.